German demonstrative pronouns. Today's lesson is all about demonstrative pronouns. So it's all about pointing the finger at something or somebody. I will show you the different German demonstrative pronouns. I will show you how you have to decline them. Yes, you have to do this with them too. And I will also show you what's so special about the demonstrative pronoun das. Hi, my name is Jan and I'm your German teacher here on Easy Deutsch, your YouTube channel for German grammar. Today's topic is German demonstrative pronouns. You always use them when you want to point with a finger at somebody. So let's switch into my new ebook, German Grammar Explained Easily, and I will explain you everything you have to know about demonstrative pronouns. So we're here now in my ebook, German Grammar Explained Easily. Today's topic, demonstrative pronouns. So let's jump to the pronouns. There we have them. And let's zoom in and let's check out first what are demonstrative pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns are used to emphasize or to demonstrate something. We always strongly stress them because we want to highlight this part. We can use them as placeholder for previously mentioned nouns, like all pronouns, right? And obviously there is not just one. There are different ones, and like all pronouns, we use them to avoid repetition of the noun. So let's have a look at there, the, and us as demonstrative pronoun first. You can see there, the, and us has several different functions. You can use them as definite articles video about definite articles in the info cards. You can also use them as relative pronouns. I published that video yesterday. You will also find it in the info cards here. And on top of that, you can use them as demonstrative pronouns. But don't be too confused about it. It's actually all very different. So easy to see the difference. And it makes it easier because their declension is almost identical. You can see here the demonstrative pronoun that it does in nominative is exactly the same like the definite article. Same in accusative, exactly the same. In dative singular, still exactly the same. In dative plural, however, it's a little bit different. We still use the en ending, but we edit to the art that would be also the definite article. So it would be den. So we add an en ending here. And we do that also in genitive. So it would be des, dessen. Double s because otherwise the pronunciation would be off. That's why double s, but it's technically the definite article here plus an en. Same here. And here it's deren. And here we have actually two options deren or derer. Both is possible and there isn't really one that's more often used. It's up to you, up to the speaker, which one to use. If you want to, stick to this version because then you just simply always add the end and it's the same like relative pronouns too. But you can also use the double er here but my recommendation is go with that one, understand that one, because if you use that one, you simply have to remember it's always an extra EN to the article here at the back. If you still struggle with cases in general, I can also recommend you check out my playlist about German cases there. I will explain every single case for you in detail, and you will also get a step-by-step -step guide to the German cases so that you never get the wrong case again. But now let's have a further look into the word order of demonstrative pronouns. They're always strongly stressed and therefore often in position one, because remember what is in position one, the one, the part of the sentence that we want to highlight. So that's why 
that's exactly the task of a demonstrative pronoun. We want to highlight, we strongly stress this part. So it should be in position one. Like, der Mann gibt der Frau den Brief. Here, no demonstrative pronoun yet. But, den gibt der Mann der Frau. Here it's a demonstrative pronoun. And we want to say, ah, den gibt der Mann der Frau. Den gibt er ihr. Same sentence, just with uh, personal pronouns. If you have problems with them, there's a video about personal pronouns too that I will link for you in the info cards. So here it should be in position one because that's what we want to highlight. But we could also say, er gibt den ihr. Then we really have to hire our voice to make it work. It grammatically, it's completely fine. But if you put it in the fourth or fourth position, it kind of contradicts the stress and the emphasis. So therefore, a native speaker would probably not really do that. And if you do not pronounce it 100%, probably native speakers will look at you and like, oh, what did he just say? There was something off of the cases. So that's why highly recommend it. Always position one because that's the part you want to emphasize. That's the part you want to highlight. So that's why demonstrative pronouns in position one. There's also a special pronoun das because das can be combined with the verb sein if we want to refer to a person or a thing means simply then we're pointing with a finger at something. And usually we combine that with the uh, local adverbs hier, da, and dort. So for example, Papa, was ist das da? So Daddy, what is this or that over there? Das ist ein Hammer. This is a hammer. So here we have the demonstrative pronoun das in combination with da. So the kid is probably looking at it and saying, hey, Daddy, what is this over there? pointing with the finger at it. And then daddy answers, yeah, this, also probably pointing with the finger at it, is a hammer. Wem gehören die Schuhe dort? So, to whom belongs the, those shoes over there? Das sind meine. Those are mine. Those are mine. That's always like we're pointing, mentally at least, with the finger at it. Also, if we do not know what something is, we can't determine the gender, right? So we don't know if it's masculine, feminine, neuter, plural. That's why we use das. Similar to the use of s, sometimes we have to use s as a subject if we don't know what we are talking about, what's the subject. Video about that also in the info cards for you. And that's the exact same thing with das here. If we don't know what something is, we use das to point at something and we use das to highlight that we want to know what that is or that we are talking about this over there. And das can also refer to an entire sentence or an entire situation. So, Anna hat sich von Tobi getrennt. Bist du dir sicher? Das kann nicht sein. So here, das refers to the situation, Anna got separated from Toby. And then, are you sure? That sounds impossible. So here, das refers to the whole sentence. And obviously, we cannot have a gender for a situation. A situation doesn't have a gender. And then, if we don't have a gender, we use das. Also, der Fernseher ist kaputt. Das wusste ich auch so schon. So the, the TV is broken. Ah, oh, yeah, I didn't know this already. So das refers again here to the situation. And the situation or idea never has a gender. So we have to use das. But that's not the end. You've probably heard a little bit already that I sometimes translated with this. Sometimes I translate it with that. We actually have this and that in German too. In a very similar use, difference is you have to decline them, yes. So we have dieser and jener for this and 
that. You simply decline them like there would be an article, like a definite article, exactly the same endings. So here it's there, this, the, the, same for the other cases. And similar, very similar to English, it is translated to this or these for plural, these are, and jena, that or those. So these is used to emphasize something close to the speaker and jena is used to emphasize something further away from the speaker. For example, gefallen dir die Schuhe? Nein, diese nicht, aber jene. So, do you like uh, those shoes? No, uh, these not, but those. Here, the difference between those two is somewhat similar in English and German, but in my opinion, in German, we can use this one for way further distances than English. So, I can pretty much still use dieser, or most people do, as long as I can see it. So if it's at the end of the horizon, then I would probably use Jena. But if it's somewhere closer, I would use dieser. Unless I'm really comparing something and one thing is closer and one thing is further away, like this part here, like this sentence, I would use both. But if I have just one object that I'm pointing at, it's always diese. It's never jene. It doesn't matter how far away it is. If I have only one thing, it's diese. If I have more than one, then the closer one gets diese, the uh, one further away gets jene. Das ist dein neues Auto. Dieses nicht, aber jenes. So, is this your new car? This one not, but that one over there. And, oh, like I said, Yenis is rarely used. And also, if you really want to highlight that something is far away, either still use this, but if you want to highlight it, use the Daddy Das plus Da or Dot. Gefallen dir diese Schuhe? Nein, diese nicht, aber die dort. Ist das dein neues Auto? Dieses nicht, aber das dort. This is the more modern way. This is the normal informal language way. This one, you will still hear it, definitely, but it's a little bit more fancy to use this version here. This is the day-to-day, -day normal people version. If you have any further question about demonstrative pronouns, please let me know in uh, the comment section below. I will always try to answer all your questions. Also, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. You can support me with a like, but also with a subscription. And if you want to, with uh, the purchase of my eBooks, you will get tons of extra content. You will get exercises to all the videos. I have 10 different eBooks specialized in prepositions, connectors, cases, or just exercises to all my videos. So if you want to check it out, there's a link in the video description to it. And then I hope you've learned a lot today and that I will see you again in one of my next videos. And until then, viel Spaß und Erfolg beim Deutschlernen.